Hello readers and digital people, and welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Grant Reads, and today we are here with Caesar, the creator of Peaceful Watcher. For those of you who have not seen it, it is an amazing <laughs> unfiction series. It goes into the aspect of people who watch other people as a hobby. This is the big one. This is really what has been on my mind since I watched your series for the first time. What inspired Peaceful Watcher? Um, I would say a lot of media, but it was like one day I got home from work and I was uh, I was on my dining room counter. They're like my dining room. I was just eating because you know, I just got work. I'm tired. And I was like, yo, it'd be a cool like movie scene if the camera's like right here. And then something just like hits the window behind me and I like turn around. I'm like, what the hell was that? I don't know why that scene I just couldn't get out of my head. And so it just kind of evolved into many things because I was also thinking like, yo, it'd be cool if there was like a story told from like the perspective of like an antagonist or someone who's not doing something right. Which also because like in the end, a lot of people might disagree with this. I still see Luis as initially at least towards the end, obviously it flip flop. Initially, he was definitely like the antagonist of the series. Just because he's like, this guy's watching people, that's not right, you know? Again, it has that duality. Because I'm looking at him like, well, it's kind of weird that he's watching all these people. But then again, you're seeing this real person. You're seeing someone who's actually lonely. Someone who is having trouble making friends, but they want to develop that friendship. They're not coming from a place of spite or a place of even being a stalker. It's more so they're trying to live this virtual life, which is I find very interesting. Because in this digital age, everyone's kind of living this virtual life. Yeah. I think like another reason I kind of had to make it because like I wanted to make him a little more evil if that makes sense but I'm a huge fan of like never breaking immersion and everything must make at least some kind of sense so I knew like okay well if he is malicious he's not gonna be posting this to YouTube because that's just that's like posting your crimes online right. so it's like okay I have to make him a hypocrite basically because most people aren't really completely evil or completely good i mean they could be doing something wrong and still be a great person and i feel like you captured that element very very well and that's a hard element to capture but you did an excellent job with that thank you <laughs> now to get into the kind of weird part of it so to expand on that question a little bit um i oftentimes watch people at like parks and stuff riding their bikes just you know seeing people do things it's interesting it's interesting to watch people and it's it's not something that's bad per se or at least i hope not i'm not being a stalker it's just you know watching people in general is entertaining and that's why we have all these medias such as uh streamers and things like that we like to watch other people how would you relate the two um streaming with what the peaceful watcher is doing do you see that as being something completely different or do you see those two things as being kind of similar i think as far as like enjoying watching people that's where it's similar because people like to watch other people especially if they're more interesting you know just that's why people watch streamers because they're like really interesting characters if they're playing a character or if they're just being themselves but i think the similarities kind of stop there because it's a huge like matter of consent that streamer is consenting you to watch them they want you to watch them whereas with luis peace watcher whatever he's watching these people without them even knowing and that's like the messed up aspect of it because i mean like if someone was like watching you on your stream you're totally okay with that but what about when someone's watching you off stream right that's like a totally different deal right it's not really true peaceful watching you're not you know following someone throughout their life but like you know just sitting on a park bench and just watching people as they go by what do you how, how do you feel that relates they're getting it from the same place just kind of watch someone doing something interesting and like some people find the mundane interesting so that's kind of like where it comes from again going back into peaceful watcher it was very well put together i could really tell that you had a lot of it, at least it seemed like you had a lot of experience in film and the way that you framed things was very well done uh, when did you very first become interested in film i think i've always been interested in like filmmaking uh i remember my family uh i got my first console when i was probably like eighth grade so before that our only form of entertainment was like television right and so I know during my childhood, I like it just ingested a lot of different like, you know, filmmaking and like, or not filmmaking, but like movies and stuff. Cause you know, we'd have like family movie night, you know? And so my favorite was obviously like horror. And I guess I kind of did learn just kind of like shots and stuff, just kind of like a lot of it can be like inspired from shows, but I still, you know, I like putting my own twist on it. Cause I hate like just straight up copying, but I don't have any like filmmaking experience until Peaceful Watcher. 
that was me just kind of like all right let's just put this to practice or let's just put this to work without practice you know and most of my shots in the series were like taken on the first shot a lot of it is first try there's very few times except for like parts where i needed a lot of acting there's very few times where i needed lots of retakes and i think that does go back to acting uh just because majority of my friends they have no experience in acting i just said hey let's do this and like okay you know because their friends and all they're like okay if you want to do that uh not all of them really followed up with the series they just kind of helped me because i'm their friend most of it's just like okay just act natural you know there's no need to like act per se so uh that's i think that's another reason why i was able to get a lot of it on one shot as compared to like ah, oh, i messed up we gotta reshoot that consider me impressed i mean <laughs> it really didn't seem like this was your first project because i've seen people who are starting out in this especially the unfiction arg genre and it's not to this quality not to this par and you've really set the bar high i expected this to be like your third or fourth series wow this is your first series yeah it, it's it's my first series i also think it's because i also ingested a lot of like unfiction arg media before this so just that matter of just collecting all this what to do what not to do stuff that was gonna be my next question i was gonna ask what brought you from uh, this idea of the person knocking on the window to the unfiction arg format it was it was the inspirations from the other shows you'd seen oh man okay so i have been ingesting arg unfiction stuff for years and i love it like to death um so it all like my big big interest in it came when i started watching a, night, a lot of nightmind that's kind of who i was like my go-to for watching this stuff but i remember even like when marble hornets was like brand new and everyone was like freaking out about it i would i would watch that like that was like my first like web on fiction and like i remember me and my brother would watch it and like we'd sit at the laptop and just watch it all like 50 like 20 episodes in one sitting and then we try and figure it out ourselves because we're like, oh, there's definitely something secret right there. And like, I just love that aspect of it. And so I kind of knew that like, okay, if I'm ever gonna, if I'm gonna make like a, a project, it has to be like this web series, ARG, like unfiction format, just cause I loved it a lot. And by watching it so much, I knew that I at least kind of had an idea of what I was doing while still wanting to be my own thing and like learn from the mistakes of others. So do you have any aspirations for something on a little bit bigger scale? Maybe a uh, film or movie, something like that? If I could get like a film or a movie, that'd be like huge to me. Uh, I remember me and my friend, my friend, my best friend, Michael, who plays Clayton in the series. He, he really liked kind of like playing in this and acting. He was one of the friends who was like, every now and then he asked me like, yo, where's the story going so far? I'm interested. And so he, he was talking about like, uh, what if we did like a mini series? where it's like it's not like a found footage kind of perspective it's like actual like camera's perspective and he wanted to make like an eight-part miniseries I was like that'd be pretty cool he's like i want to make it like netflix good and so i was like that, that could be doable we'd be have a shoestring budget but but yeah if i i think eventually if i could get to like a show or tv i mean i definitely wouldn't turn that down that'd be huge i definitely think you do a good job at it like I said, the writing in Peaceful Watcher and the way you did the screenplay and the way it progressed was really just great. So I, I, I could see you doing a really good job on a bigger budget production. Thank you. <laughs> so in your future projects, um, what did you learn from Peaceful Watcher that would, you would do differently this time? And what did you learn from Peaceful Watcher that you would maybe expand on in their, your coming series? Uh, I would say I learned a lot, like a lot, a lot. So this kind of this may be a little long this explanation but it makes sense so it was a bunch of like mini mistakes i made that were small at the time but as the series continued it made all the difference and like oh i could have been able to do this or had this opportunity to do that so one example is at the very beginning of the series probably around jesse 2 I was trying so hard to make it seem like a legitimate stalker on YouTube. And so because of this, my web series is picking up traction in like 4chan export and Reddit. And so I was getting a bunch of these viewers and I was psyched. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> it's picking up. And then I overreacted on damage control because I panicked when I saw that these people thought it was so real 
that they were legitimately trying to get my address and where I live. Like they found my my city like that. They found like the exact area a place was filmed that super quick. And so I had yet to like film something at my house. So I shouldn't have been worried about them finding my address in hindsight at least but at the time i was on panic mode i was like oh my god these guys are gonna find my address they're gonna send police or something bad is gonna happen so i went on damage control and at that point i changed the series to be a little less realistic and a little bit of goofiness in it so that way people can go like so just as like a subtle nod is like hey this isn't real by the way don't do anything drastic but i kind of wish i kept rolling with the realism because it definitely could have seen a lot more growth but because I doubled down on the trying to still make it like immersive while still going like this isn't real, it turned off a lot of those viewers. Cause like a lot of people, they go to it looking like, oh my God, the next big YouTube controversy or scary thing that happened in real life is happening. And then I found out the ARG, it just turned them off and they left, sadly. Uh, another one was self promotion is like big in, you know, on fiction ARG. And so obviously I did a little bit of that to help it grow. And then once it started picking up more, I was like, oh, I don't need to do this anymore. Uh, the job's all done. It'll just keep growing from here. What actually happened is it plateaued. Because at the ma at the end of the day, I just really wanted to tell a story. But, you know, it makes me feel better when I know a lot of people are looking at the story. Another one, I'd say another mistake I made that I will never make again is biting off more than I can chew. Because what I was actually going to do is I was going to run two projects at the same time that were in the same universe, but had totally different stories. That was uh, way too much work. And one of them def like got abandoned right there. And then I kind of was forced to kind of make it tie into Peaceful Watcher a little bit. Just so that way anyone who came from there could still go to Peaceful Watcher if they wanted. But I feel like... A lot of stuff would have been easier to write if I had just not made it in the first place and kept things a little simpler. So going into your inspirations, uh, not just in Peaceful Watcher, but in all of the work you'll be doing going forward, all the different series and whatever you produce, what do you draw your inspiration from? What is your muse? It really depends on what I'm creating because a lot of times I'll watch or hear something and I go like, ooh, I like the vibe that gives me. And instead of like trying to rec like instead of just copying it, I'll try my best to find my own way to create that same vibe or like intention I got from the video. An example would be Tribe 12. Uh, a lot of inspiration for Beast Watcher comes from Slender series. So Marble Hornets, Everman Hybrid, Tribe 12 are the ones I find most. The Judge videos, I really like the vibe of, you know, like the Tribe 12, like the, the scary parts of it where it's like all distorted and stuff. Yeah. So I really like that, and I was like, okay, I like this, but I don't want to just put reverse music with stock footage like they did, because, you know, that'd be just straight up copying them. And I tried really hard to create that, like, that feeling I got from it in all the Judge videos. I kept the black and white part, but I was like, okay, I don't want to just take stock footage, I want to, like, make my own. And then I don't want to just reverse music, so I made my own music. All the Judge video music I made myself. So I'll just do like different parts of it, doing acapella in the mic, and then I'll just edit the way the voice sounds. Because I, I don't know how to play any instruments. I don't know how to use any music editing software. So I just kind of think of a theme. I'll come up with it, and then I'll put all the voices together to make like this acapella song type thing. But you can't tell because, you know, how much I changed it. So once someone has completely went through uh, Peaceful Watcher, what message do you hope that they take away from it? After doing all the solves, everything. I thought of this in the very beginning. <laughs> um, so I once heard someone say that like every good story has a moral or a lesson or, you know, like a big theme. And so for Peaceful Watcher, I'm hoping the, the big theme they can learn is kind of like the dangers of hypocrisy, if that makes sense. Because okay. yeah. there's a lot of characters who will preach one thing, such as Luis or Clayton. They both did this. They'll preach one thing and then be doing the exact opposite and instead of understanding that what they're doing is hypocrisy or like wrong they'll just try and find ways to justify doubling down on that and that led to a lot of the major problems in this series for both characters Luis he comes up with these rules to justify his stalking saying it's not stalking you know I'm just peacefully watching these guys but as he reveals later in the story he is doing a lot of these these uh, things 
that he said he wouldn't do. I think the only one he didn't end up breaking was he wouldn't film Woman or Children. That was the only one he didn't break, because, I mean, that'd be weird if I had to record that. Now, this is something I'm also kind of curious about. Uh, the twist with Clayton, was that something planned from the beginning? Yeah, and Clayton, I love that I made it like a twist, because I could put these little drops like little hints throughout the whole thing that wouldn't make sense at first but then they would later on uh i'll give an example like in the first judge video the first thread he ever gets from the judge clayton whatever he mentions hector a lot you know like i'll make you pay like you did hector and so upon watching it with only the information you have at the time you think he's saying that because he's like hector was my last victim you know i messed with him you're next and then later on you find out is Clayton had to watch his friend go through all that psychological torment and stuff and then being filled with rage after his friend finally died wanted to just inflict that on someone else all right so I do have one more question for you here today and this is the question that I ask everyone and that would be when you're gone I don't want to be morbid but when you're gone what message would you like your work your art to leave on the world it's going to be very cliche because everyone says this but I just cannot stop hammering at home how like important this idea is. And I know everyone like everyone says this, it's very basic, but it's because it's true. And that is the idea that if you want to like do something or make something, whether it's a web series or whatever you want, just like, you know, go do it. Like actually get up and like go do it. Like even if you don't have a plan, just start doing it. You won't really know if you're good at something or if you like something until you do it. Like, for example, before Peace Watcher, another COVID project I had was I made my own homemade board game and my friends liked it. It was pretty fun. So I guess maybe that was like the first in big projects. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this because I'm also a big board game enthusiast. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today. I really appreciate you taking out the time for this interview. Uh, I've had a great time really learning your inspirations behind all of this. Um, really kind of digging deeper into this because when I approached Peaceful Watcher, I didn't know what to expect. And then once I got into it, I found out it was this extremely deep project, many layers, it all connected in this very cohesive, beautiful way. And then to kind of get into your mind and see that it's you as an artist, you really have this artist soul and you don't even have this, what inspires you is to show others what you were inspired by. And that is the mark of a true artist. And I really appreciate you sharing that piece of yourself with us today. Thank you. Uh, oh, my God. I don't even know what to say when people say stuff like that to me. <laughs> Again, I will have the links to his channel, uh, the Peaceful Watcher, and to the new project in the description below and in the pinned comment if you all want to check that out. I definitely recommend at least checking out Peaceful Watcher. It is a very great series. It is completed. So it's something you can watch starting today, and you can watch it all the way through. Appreciate you all for stopping by. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Got plenty more things on the way. And as always, keep your eyes wide open and never stop reading. I'll see you all. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. All proceeds go back towards the channel for props, for costumes, and for any trips we take or any games we play. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jerry Mullins, and Free Spirit Katie. Really, thank you all so much for allowing me to do what I love to do.